Hello guys, welcome to Watching Time and Happy New Year's as it has already been uh, over to the new year 2022. I really hope that you all had fun in family and that you enjoy at least the start of the year. So today we're going to talk about a brand that is not that new in terms of relaunching, but it's really old because it's actually a brand that has been around since 1956. Um, I have done other videos on other models that they have, for example, the oceanographer, no, the, the ocean graph, sorry. Now I'm confusing with, with the Bulova oceanographer, the ocean graph and, uh, and the C1000 also. Um, and it's really interesting because uh, Ole Kahn Weiss, Ole Kahn Wachs, whatever you want to pronounce it correctly, I don't really know. Uh, it has a lot of history in terms of divers and uh, 50s, 60s, 70s that were probably their best years in terms of uh, tool watch making um, because they are really loved by a huge community of fans that uh, and collectors that are collecting still the vintage watches that were made at the time by this brand. Uh, the new relaunch of, of the brand was definitely well accepted because it was kind of what happened with Doxa, uh, a relaunch of an interesting brand that you have been seeing for the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, and that actually have a really strong history and connection to the world of tool diving watches. Um, and this is their latest presentation, the latest model, we can say the one that has actually closed the 2021 year uh, as being their latest. And I think it is a really, really interesting proposition. There is one thing that the new relaunch of Oleg and Weiss has in common, the case. So definitely in the 60s and the 70s, the models that they were launching were quite different between them. And you will find a lot of fakes around. Uh, that were also of that era. So uh, we, we are talking obviously not a brand that is being faked by the Chinese market of today, but was actually mainly faked by India market in the 80s. And there are a lot of these fake watches from Oleg Advice that you will easily find in eBay. So you have to be really careful where to look for it. Uh, if you actually manage to get one of the vintage pieces, you will see there is a quite a very nice variety of them. And uh, at least from my knowledge and for what I know, I really, really thankful that this has been relaunched as a brand with a new modern take on what was the past. Uh, among their models, um, and you can see the ocean graph in a more detailed model, I think this is actually one of the most interested uh, launches that they had in 2020. Uh, because it's actually a 1000 meter watch represented in a 40 almost millimeter case, very sturdy, excellent diver with a measuring vessel and uh, a lot of functions that remind you also of the vibe of the 70s. As I was saying, the case, it's almost exactly the same between all the new relaunch models that they are doing. And this gives a continuity to what this new era can be. Obviously, the only risk with this is that with time, maybe fans will get a little bit annoyed and they will not want to have all of their models. Uh, this is particularly in my case because most of them are really, really nice, but changing the coloration and the vessel is not enough at some point. And having a new cases or new bracelets would be really, really nice. Nothing wrong with the Beat Rides uh, bracelet that they are uh, right now sharing between all their models. The clasp definitely can be improved uh, into something that it's a little bit milled, probably will be better. Uh, this is something I have already noticed on the other video. So there are small things that I think can actually take the brand to the next level. Uh, and I just wanted to share it with you. So let's go back to the newest model. So what we have here, we have the Ole Canvas Navicron. So this was based on one of the chronographs from the history of Oleg and Weiss, uh, it was from the 60s, a chronograph that it is very likely and reminiscent of other chronographs of the era. Uh, and you will find several versions online. I'm not sure how many of them are 
real uh, or there were modifications uh, because there are vintage pieces but there is definitely one version in which this one is inspired with the stainless steel vessel uh, but it's not the same as i was saying they have taken the inspiration from the navigron they have retooled a little bit the case that they are using nowadays with the other olecan vice and voila you have a new key interpretation of the old navicron into a modern scenario you have first of all a very very nice dark gray dial it's absolutely stunning i think it's one of the best things of this watch the combination of the colors it's not black it's not an inverse panda like others um it, especially because you you are it's very common to find chronographs that have black dial and white uh, sub dials in this case the color it's really nice because it's a very subtle tone of gray and i really appreciate that they actually took the road uh, on the other sa side you have the lume indicators and obviously the hands that are lume with the tip of the chronograph that it's lume and right now i have put it at the four o'clock position just also for you to have a look at the logo uh, and that works really fine i think the the use of the this tinted yellow vintage lume definitely plays very well with the gray and the color of the stainless steel case so let's do look at some of the features and one of the main uh, characteristics that we will see first of all when the navicron was relaunched uh, at least the news came out it was early 2020 no, December 2020, sorry. December 2020, uh, obviously the watch community was really enthusiastic for a relaunch of the Navicron. <clears throat> and many people pre-ordered the watch. Uh, due to COVID and other problems around it, the production was very limited. So I think even if they said they were going to produce other batches, actually the production has stopped, I think, at 56. So this is the magic number that they end ended up doing. Uh, it was supposed to be released around May 2021, but there were several problems. Uh, the main problem was related actually to the use of the brand Navicron. Uh, there, there was a legal dispute with Swatch Group. Uh, somehow they were, I suppose, owners or copyright of the name. Um, and at the end of the day, they didn't want the dispute. So we don't have a Navicron written on the dial, but that's fine. I think this is a very nice idea still to have it based from the Navicron and it's okay not having the name, but particularly it, it brings you probably a value, an added value in terms of vintage nostalgia. Yes, but at the end of the day, I think this just works really, really well. On the other side, they decided to retool also the vessel. So you have here a vessel that can work as a second, uh, to, uh, second hour um timekeeping so you can actually time keep another gmt with it as it has the 1 to 12 uh, indicators and at the same time you have a 20 minutes indicator with a lume dot and a lume triangle uh, that's also a very good idea and it's a smart idea because this is a chronograph yes but it's also a diving watch it has actually a diving water resistance of 500 meters so you can actually go dive with this watch have a lot of fun on the sea and still keep your time chronometer obviously don't do it under the sea but the gaskets that are built into these pushers are a total of four so it actually permits you to have a pusher and at the same time don't have water leaking inside of the watch in the case of an immersion so you have the 500 meters you have also the design here at the left side of the case of the date pusher so this is what i going to actually change the date and as you notice i really really like the design it looks kind of a helium bulb and some watches have helium bulbs at 500 meter water resistance but it's something that Oleg and vice has managed to do very well on this ocean graph 1000 meter uh, water resistance there is no helium valve for example and here you don't have it either you have the date pusher, which is typical of the movement, the value uh, 7753. So uh, you can easily change the date from this. There's also something that I really like from it, the shape. 
I think it's really a nice touch to have this hexagon on the left side of the watch. I think aesthetically looking at it, it's really nice and it's actually a nice touch to the overall uh, watch aesthetics. So I think they actually did a very good work. The case, it's a very limited in size case because at the end of the day, we have a 39.8 millimeters and it's it's obviously going to be housing a value, so you cannot have a thin uh, case here, but the case is still very limited with around 16 millimeters uh, width. So at the end of the day, it works really, really well. The lugs are the same as other uh, Olecan Vice watches, so they are quite long, and this lets the watch sit very, nice also on bigger wrists. So this is actually a nice touch at the end. Compared to other chronographs or other watches that I have similar in size, for example, I'm thinking here about the Tudor Black Blade. Actually, the leather strap works very well here. And there is, yes, a gap between the watch and the lugs, but you don't see it that much. And I think at the end of the day, it, it, day it works much better. So I think they actually died a very good work and I was thinking about the chrono one of the first chrono black base because they actually did a model that was actually very similar with the gray dark dark gray very dark gray dial and sub dials and the stainless steel vessel so the model was uh, presented in two versions the stainless steel and the leather strap I obviously got the leather strap because I already have a, a stainless steel on one of the other watches and they are totally interchangeable between them, so that's totally fine. Uh, the leather strap, it's a really nice leather. It doesn't indicate where it's come from or its origin. Uh, I can only guess that it's Italian, but the quality, it looks to be very good and, and it actually fits very well the wrist. You have here the clasp, the clasp, well, the buckle of the strap with OW set 1956 sign on it. The back case, uh, and here I have to do uh, a note on it. It actually works very well because it's clean. It has the necessary information without giving too much, but and it has also the logo of the brand. But at the same time, I think they did a really good work fitting it in a correct shape and position. If you see, it's vertical to the case. And this is something that most uh, watch producers miss and it's something that you can actually do during production for it to be fit in a way that it actually has a verticality to it and not just any place the crown is signed with the number of the limited edition and what number obviously you have as an owner this is something that they do on every watch they did it also on the ocean graph but this was not a limited production so after the 56 they just kept producing it with a normal crown that has the normal logo. The logo of Oleg and Weiss is something that I really like because at least personally, it reminds me of an owl, uh, you know, the small bird uh, at night. <laughs> so uh, this is just me and my imagination, but it reminds me a lot of a face of an owl and I really think it works and it's quite nice. So here, we have obviously not the Navicron name, you have automatic with 500 meters. And as you can see, the value movement that has been uh, relatively altered in order for it to have two sub dials and not three that normally it has. And uh, obviously here the date at six, uh, it works perfectly, perfectly fine. And you can actually acti activate it and reset it at any time. In this type of watches, sometimes I just tend to move my chrono hand a little bit into another position for me to appreciate better at least the logo of the watch if I want to see it because sometimes it just stacks there and I don't like it in a, from an aesthetic point of view but this is just me guys so just a quick wrist shot of the watch 18 centimeters wrist and as you can see the lax length which is the same on all the other Olecan Vice almost um, at the end of the day, makes that this 39 millimeters watch works also very well on bigger end uh, wrist, uh, but it also can work on a smaller wrist as uh, you will tend to have um, 
you know, um, a size that is going to be fit you at, as well. So what are the cons? So positive aspects, I see a lot. And I have to say that I was really impressed with this, uh, with this new release because um, I think they really, really spot it on in terms of colors, in terms of quality, uh, and in terms, obviously, of the overall design. It works very well. The cons that I see from this are some of the things that I have been seeing in the past, uh, also from the Ole and Vice production, and is particularly, at least from my point of view, guys, uh, the lume that they are, they are using on the dials. So this is an advice for them. Um, for me, the watch works very well. I love it. And I would continue to support, obviously, Ole and Vice in the future, and I'm really curious to see what direction they're doing. They're, they're going to take also, and what new models maybe. Now, advice number one, maybe they should start at this point uh, now that the brand is more reconsolidated, let's say, among new fans also and new watch collectors to reconsider using new cases. That would be really interesting to start seeing on Ole and Vice. The other thing is the lume, the lume that they are using on their dials. The lume on the hands, the minutes hands and the, and the hour hands, and even on the bezel, it's spot on. It works very well. It charges fast on light, on natural light, obviously, and it lasts. The lume on the dial sucks. It doesn't last anything, and it's very, very weak. So there is a, a big difference between the ones in the dial and the one on the hands. I have had other Olecan vice. The Ocean Graph works actually very nice, and the lume is perfect, both on the dial, both on the hands. The other Olecan Vice watches that I have had had the same problem. They had a low lume on the dial, but a very good lume, obviously, on the minutes and, and hour hands. So this is something that they should be double checking before or improving if it's not a company policy. If it's their idea and they are happy with it, that's fine. They should be stating this to the people because People like me, I am expecting the watch to have the same lume level all around. So the same quantity that you're going to be putting to the hands has to be put on the markers in the dial. This is just me, guys. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Anyway, I wanted to share with you this new model, the Navicron. I really like it. I have to say that it works really well. I have been wearing it for the last two days and it has become very fast, a new favorite in my collection. And I really like the leather strap. I have not tried yet on the bit rise uh, metal strap, but I've, I'm sure that it also will work very, very well. Anyway, guys, see you very soon on the next video. Until then.